Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is Imad and today Google released Android 13 Beta 1. This is the first beta in Android 13 journey. I have it installed on my Pixel 5. Also, I'm going to compare it side by side with Developer Preview 2 on my Pixel 4a to be able to spot every new change. Before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel to get notified about my upcoming videos. And now, let's jump in. Let's start with the build number really quick. It's TPB1.220310.029. And as you see here, it has the word Tramiso on the left. The update size on my Pixel 5 is 429 megabytes if you managed to install it through the system settings. And now let's take a look at the new features. So let's start with the lock screen. On the left, I have my Pixel 4a running developer preview 2. And on the right, I have the Pixel 5 running beta 1. The first change is in the unlocking keypad. As you see, the first change is the new text at the top says enter your pin that didn't exist before. And also the emergency call button is now called emergency. As you see here on the Pixel 4a, it's called emergency call, but now it's called emergency. Also, when you tap on the buttons, the text inside will fade out briefly, which wasn't the case before. Another change under settings related to the lock screen, when you go to settings, and then display and then lock screen you will see a new switch here called control from locked device the description says control external devices without unlocking your phone or tablet if allowed by the device controls app and now i have the home controls shortcut and as you see now when i tap on any of my smart lights i can take the action without unlocking the device this new feature didn't work for me at first and I had to open my Google app and then jump to Google Assistant settings, then lock screen. And after activating those two switches, the feature started to work. But before doing this, it kept asking me to unlock the device before taking the action. Now let's talk about the home screen and the app drawer. The first change is the removal of the system wide search and we are back again to the Google search widget like before. So I'm not sure why Google disabled the feature in this build. And the last change under the home screen is the new themed icon for Google Chrome. As you see here on the right, I have beta one and the logo is bigger compared to the previous version while the normal icon looks exactly the same. So these are all the changes I spotted under the home screen and the app drawer. But when we go to the wallpaper and the style app, now we have tons of colors to choose from. For example, under wallpaper colors, as you see, I have three pagination dots that shows me 12 different palettes to choose from. Not only this, but when I go to basic colors, I have even four pages. And now we have what it's called dual colors, not only a single color like before. And as you see, we have tons of them. I'm sorry, the scrolling is not easy in this build. So this is the first page, this is the second, and finally the third. But keep in mind the number of palettes and colors is not fixed. Now I changed the wallpaper and as you see I have only two pagination dots under wallpaper colors in a sort of three like the previous one. But I still have the same four pages under basic colors. So it varies depending on your wallpaper. Now let's talk about the notifications shade and the quick setting styles and the first change is in the media controls. So here a side by side comparison with my Pixel 4a running developer preview 2 on the left. As you see, the app icon is now using the themed icon instead of the normal one. Also, there is a smaller margin between the media controls switcher and the play and pause button. Not only this, but when you play the song, on the left side, you will see the part you listen to is a squiggling, which is something we saw only in Google's I.O. last year. And this is not the case in the pre previous version of Android 13. The second change is the priority mode is now back again to do not disturb in beta 1. The screencast tile got a new overlay card as you see here on the right. Now it matches the device theme. Both devices are set to the light theme, but only beta 1 Android 13 is uh, showing this difference. And also the cast icon is centered with the text underneath it, which is not the case before. And the settings button is now bigger with a frame around it and it has this kind of rounded corners and instead of that text only button like before. The consolidated security and the privacy tile is no longer available in beta 1. Now let's talk about some random changes I came across and the first one is the new clipboard 
editor. So for example, let's say you want to copy this text. As you see, we have here a thumbnail at the bottom left corner, similar to the screenshot thumbnail. Tapping on it will take you to this editing page. From here, you can add extra text like this. You can copy the newly added text and as you see, it appears here or you can simply share it right away from this screen to any of the contacts you want. Not only this, but sometimes it will suggest certain actions. So if I copied this link, as you see here, I have the option to open it in Google Chrome. The new clipboard editor also works when you copy photos. So for example, if I want to copy this image, as you see, I'm getting the same thumbnail. Tapping on it will take me right away to the markup app. The second change is the new fingerprint icon when you try to do an action that requires unlocking the device. Now let's talk about the new changes under settings, starting with the accessibility menu. When you go to color and motion, now we have the dark theme toggle. And instead of having it separated, in the main page and there is a new icon for the remove animations option back to the main page and then magnification now the follow typing feature is called magnify typing back again to the main page and you will see here the audio description feature is no longer listed under display however when you scroll all the way down it's listed under audio now let's move on to system and then language and input and the first change is the removal of the app languages feature that we first saw in developer preview 2 but now all we have is the languages option back again to system and then gestures and finally under quick tap now we have the option to toggle flashlight back again to gestures and then system navigation when you go to the three buttons navigation settings you will see this new graphical representation plus the option renamed to hold home for assistant and instead of hold home to invoke assistant still under gestures and when you go to the one-handed mode and scroll all the way down you will see how to use one-handed mode text at the bottom and instead of showing here at the top and it also got some refinements it's now shorter and has bullet points and finally under system and then developer options when you scroll all the way down you will see a new toggle here called the stylus handwriting the description says when enabled current input device receives a stylus motion event if an editor is focused so it seems like google is expanding the support for the stylus feature for tablets and phones now let me show you multiple hidden features reported from multiple sources that i'm gonna read for you from a telegram channel called google news the first change here is the new icon for android system notifications so for example if you have the usb debugging activated this is the new icon you will see and it seems like google is working on a new feature that will allow you to adjust the screen resolution as you see here we have two options high resolution which is full hd or quad hd plus and this feature got activated, I think, by Mesha Rahman, as shown here in the post. Next, switching the device to silent mode no longer disables the haptic feedback. And this is a change we saw in developer preview too, but it seems like Google canceled this change. And in the future, we might see a new toggle under settings that will allow you to hide or show the vibration mode icon. And this is also reported by Mesha Rahman. And regarding the removal of the system-wide search, it seems like Google is working on a unified search bar that will allow you to access the system-wide search either from your home screen or the app drawer and it says here the search itself is currently broken but you still have a way to activate that system-wide search if you want using this adb command that i'm going to leave in the description below and this command has been shared by mesha rahman on twitter another report by mesha rahman says that the special audio is coming to the pixel 6 models and he saw some references in the code the last thing to talk about in this video is the stability of this build i don't recommend installing it on your day-to-day -day device for two reasons first the loss of some features like the system wide search and secondly i faced a lot of freezes and a shutter lag while using the phone so i don't think it's a good idea to install it now maybe beta 3 will be good enough for your day-to-day -day device but beta 1 i don't think so so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new changes i wanted to show you in android 13 beta 1 please let me know in the comments if i missed anything to include in my future videos but for now thank you so much for watching and see you the next video